Host of NCI Talk is veteran journalist Wally Kennedy. Currently a news anchor for KYW News Radio, the CBS All News Station in Philadelphia. Kennedy spent 20 years with Channel 6, ABC in Philadelphia, where he hosted and co produced Sunday Live, a news discussion program, anchored and co produced Inside Story, a rapid fire news issues show, and hosted Philly After Midnight and AM Philadelphia. Earlier, he hosted The Wally Kennedy Show on WCAU AM CBS Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the pilot taping of NCI Talk. And now, NCI Talk, taking an honest look at health care with your host, Wally Kennedy, and special guests, Karen Machuka, Jim Fitzgerald, Karen Barrow, Bill McLargy, and Dr. Choi. Hello and welcome to NCI Talk. I'm Wally Kennedy. We all want to live to be 100 years old, but if we continue to go on our current pace, will the healthcare system that's going to get us there collapse? We have opinions all over this stage. Literally, I'd like you to meet our guest. First, we welcome Bill McLargy, who is a former orthopedic manufacturer executive. By the way, all the major device companies were invited, all declined. Dr. Sang Choi, who's with Florida Sports Orthopedic and Spine Medicine, is an orthopod and also a surgeon. And we welcome Karen Majuka, who is a partner with Deloitte, and Karen Barrow, a Vice President of Amerinet Clinical Advantage. And finally, Jim Fitzgerald, Senior VP, Contracts and Operations, HCA. Welcome one and all. It's nice to have you with us. I saw an advertisement for the Jack Nicklaus hip. Now, if I want a hip replacement, doctor, is there an ounce worth of difference between the Jack Nicklaus hip and a generic one? I, I think it, that all depends on uh, who you listen to. I think that each surgeon has a preference as to what prosthesis they want to use. Technology and the design has become such that very, I think there's very little differences between the different companies. I think that if you if you are good at what you're doing and you're comfortable with the system that you use, that's the one that each surgeon should use. For instance, if I'm used to doing a system that I've been doing for 15, 20 years, and then now I'm told to use a different system, I, it doesn't make sense for me to switch over to Jack Nicholas system because the advertisement and everybody wants me to do use that. I don't have as much experience. How with much of the problem system. in healthcare is the fact that a lot of patients are going into their doctor and so be it the Jack Nicklaus hip or yeah. be it Nexium or be it whatever, the patients are going into their doctors and saying, I don't want a stomach pill, I want Nexium, I want the purple pill. How much is that the problem? Well, we at HCA, uh, I've talked to several surgeons who have indicated that this direct to consumer advertising has been very effective because in many cases, uh, an, uh, a gentleman would come in, likes to play golf, saw the commercial, and is asking their surgeon to use that particular hip. And uh, so it's been very frustrating for the surgeons because they have to explain why they feel the system that they're comfortable working with is best for the patient and not the, the hip that's uh, being mm -hmm. advertised on TV. So it's an interesting dynamic. Let's talk about PPI, the physician being able to say, I want this when I want it, and if you don't give it to me, I'm going to go to the hospital down the road. Karen Barrow, if you do that with your hospitals, what happens? Is it going to bankrupt the hospital system? It potentially could. I think um, most physicians are very aware of what needs to go on their patients. You still want the clinicians making the ultimate decision, just as you said, about what product is appropriate for that patient. I think as an industry, what we need to provide for our physicians is what the cost effectiveness, the, the cost effectiveness of this care is going to be. What does it cost when you make that decision, and can you really prove that you've, the quality is there, that you've actually improved the quality by using that product? If there's one change you'd make, it'd be what? Providing credible data for the clinicians and for the corporate suites for their physicians. Do you agree with that, Karen? I do, and I also think that we'll start to see a change in the consumer behavior over the course of the next few years as the consumer-driven plans become more and more prominent. And the, the cost of implants, drugs, et cetera, will become more and more transparent to the patient, and they'll actually be making some decisions about what it's worth to them to purchase for their own care. 
What do you think of the root causes associated with this issue of medical devices? This is your field. I mentioned when I was introducing you, Bill, that, that we invited people from the major device manufacturers and they all politely declined. Why? Why are you guys the bad guy? Well, I think, I think if you're going to bring an executive from, uh, from a medical device company in here, no matter how he tries to explain his strategy and how he's going forward, he's not speaking to a receptive audience. I mean, there's been a, there's been a, a, a great deal of, of uh, uh, bantering about, about the tremendous increases in prices over the years, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you ask really what is the root cause of that problem, the root cause really is the lack of incentives or aligned incentives amongst all the stakeholders within the healthcare industry. Everybody agree? Yeah, I think it's a big, big challenge. If, you know, if you frame this overall issue, uh, supplies are, are the second largest expense for a, for a normal hospital, and they're if growing. If they're out of control, what do you do to, to bring them back well, into control? It, it's very, very difficult because you want to put patients first. Clearly, every hospital caregiver puts that at the top of the list. Secondly, you want good physician relations. And, um, and so trying to balance uh, initiatives to reduce cost and still keep those two most important priorities at the top is very, very difficult for hospitals. Something's got to give. What's got to give? Obviously, the cost is a big factor for everyone concerned. You know, I think a lot of the uh, hospitals, have, they have to make money, otherwise they, they have to close the doors. And I think that as an orthopedic surgeon, I've been approached by the hospitals many a times to say, your product is too expensive for us to use. And how does that Can make you feel? Well, I'm frustrated because I've got nothing to do with it. I, I don't make any single extra dime. It doesn't matter whether the, uh, this product is more expensive than this product. I do know in my hands this product works much better because I've had 15 years of experience doing this. Can you imagine doing a prosthesis and doing a procedure and each nuances of, of, of how you do the procedure changes them and if, if you, even though the design may be similar, every instrumentation is different. If, if, you, if I'm doing your hip, don't you think you'd want me to put in something that I've been doing for 15 years instead mm -hmm. of having to find a whole new system to put in because the com hospital comes to me and says, no, you cannot use that system anymore because it costs too much money. Do you think for better or for worse the American healthcare system can survive by letting any doctor dictate what he or she will use, not only in terms of orthopedic devices, pills, beds, anything. Well, mar if, margins, if it's a physician-driven system, will it survive? You know, margins are, are shrinking very dramatically, and most hospitals have a margin of about 3%. The answer to this whole problem is better reimbursement. I mean, that's, everybody wins, the, the sellers of the devices, the hospitals. We've got to have better reimbursement. Typical Medicare reimbursement increases 2 to 3 percent a year. Managed care may be in the 6 to 8 percent range. Medical device costs are increasing from 10 to as high as 20 percent per year, and that's been going on for at least the last 8 to 10 years. Something has to give. The easiest answer is reimbursement. I think we've got to come together as an industry better to, to explain these issues so that we get paid appropriately, yeah, I doctors think included. Piece to this, though. The, the the reimbursement piece absolutely is very important, but I also don't believe that clinicians make bad decisions or, or nefarious decisions. I think they make the best decisions with the information that they have available to them at any given point in time, either how a device works, uh, what, whether it's best for the patient, et cetera. I think one of the keys is to give the clinicians the information that they need to either make different decisions about what they select or to work with the administration in the, in the hospitals to go to the manufacturers and sit at the table and negotiate the prices down. So I think it's a combination of both. I don't think